the day. Welcome to King Moves Everything. We got us a fluorescent fixture here, and we're going to swap out some tubes for some LED bulbs. I've done many of these already, and I like the single-ended ones. There's actually two kinds. There's uh, th These are T8s, but there's uh, dual-ended, single-ended. Uh, I chose the single-ended ones because when these first came out, I don't think there were dual-ended ones where you got power, neutrals one side, uh, the live's on the other side, where the single-ended live and neutral are on the same side. And I'll show you that in a second. Uh, these are some fairly inexpensive bulbs. I have, I like the Hype Paracon. Those are very good. I bought these because they're fairly inexpensive, and they're 6,000 Kelvin. And I bought a 10-pack of these for, I'm trying to think. They end up being like $8 a piece. $6. $6 a piece. I think it may have been 60 bucks for a 10 pack. So they're probably not the finest of quality, but they seem like they should be. These are Sunoco, Sunco lighting. Never heard of these guys before, but you can see it's a G13 base, shatterproof, uh, LED T8 tube. And this is 5,000 or oh, 6,000 Kelvin. That's why I bought this guy. I wanted to see the difference between the 6,000, 5,000. I've done pretty much only 5,000. And this was the same price as the 5,000. I figured Give it a try. You want to know what the difference is? I can't tell the difference. Uh, this has 2200 lumens. Some of the ones I bought are 2100, 2000 lumen. This one, pretty good. 18 watts, very nice. And you kind of see it's got the long box. It's kind of hard to put it all in there. It's very simple. Uh, you just don't put these in a fluorescent tube or fluorescent, fluorescent fixture. You have to retrofit. So if you look at the instructions, it says retrofit steps and here's basically how you wire it up instead of having live and neutral on one uh, live on one neutral on the end you have them all going in one or the other and i'll take this top out so you can kind of see how i wired it up but it gives you some nice little instructions how to do a single bulb dual bulb oh wait single bulb four bulb fixture it's pretty easy power neutral power neutral button so a lot of videos showing how to do that but i'll just kind of show you what i did I do remove the ballast because it's pointless. You don't need it, and it's one less thing in your ceiling. It makes the pictures a little lighter. And I like to hang them in the garage, so it's, you know, whether you keep them or not, it's up to you. Pretty simple. Just rewire it, and away you go. The bulbs. Um, not sure how uh, there's really, and they're interesting bulbs. You can see it, they just have the strip of LEDs in there. There's no. It's just a plastic tube where the Hypericons have a metal backing, so they're pretty pretty sturdy. This one doesn't flex much, but I'm just not sure over time how, when this gets hot. You know, you're up in a ceiling where it's really hot. Will they flex or will they, they droop a little bit? I don't know. They seem pretty pretty stiff for what they are. But like I said, there's no metal backing. Um, and the Hypericon, their driver is probably about, you know, about like that long. This one is apparently in here. So that gives you a kind of idea of the difference in electronics. I can kind of see it all smushed in there. It's hard to see, just one little circuit board. But so you're kind of getting a fairly inexpensive driver. I guess that's how you get them for six bucks a pop. And they might have been cheaper because I bought a 10 pack. But it comes nicely packaged. It's got the little, ah, little covers on the pins. So that's cool. So good job on that. And for six bucks, you know, uh, I think it said, I can't remember how many, 45,000 hours. It was kind of ridiculous. I don't think they'll last that long. I have found that a lot of these, what will happen is over time, not not this brand, but some of the cheap brands you might see, you know, like the first third of it goes out, you know, or the middle or the last third will go out and everything else just keeps going. Like, And then you'll see if you bought like a pack of them, they'll seem like they all break at the same, you know, so like they had a, some bad LEDs on this machine that was picking and placing but uh, I don't know. These are pretty good so far. I've used them for, you know, maybe got five or six hours on them. Not this one specific, but the ones that are hanging up. So, like I said, it's other than, you know, there is no, it's just, I guess there's kind of feel a bump here. Maybe this is, I don't know. There's really no metal back, and it's just a tube. And it's stuck in the tube, and somehow it's glued on, and you put them in. Uh, I like to see the non-frost. This has a slight frosting to it. I use like the really clear ones because they're in a garage or a shop. You know, it's just you want light. You're not going to be staring at them. But you can get the frosted ones and they kind of, you don't see the LEDs as much. But So I'm going to pop this open so you can see. And what I've done, if you look right here, since these are single-ended, I always mark the power because, you know, you sell your shop, you sell your factory, you sell your house. 
next guy comes along, you know, this is, this burns out, they go to a good bulb and put it in, it don't work. You know, because it seems like a lot of people buy the dual-ended ones or just the ones you leave in the ballast, leave everything in, put your LED bulb in and just simple retrofit. Uh, I don't like it because you're not saving any power. We can spend money on new bulbs and still use your 40, 80 watts of power. And then you get, if you do take out the ballast, it's 18 watts. So two of these bulbs is the power of one bulb. So... But I do mark them so that way you don't put them in backwards. Put them backwards is not going to hurt the single-ended ones. But um, I do like to mark them because, you know, you take them down and it's like, wait a second, which side's the power? You know, this is the powered end. So let me take off the top for you. Okay, so there you go. That's the top off. And you kind of see what I did. Uh, everything comes to this side. This here is the, the cables going. The other one I just kind of tucked down under here. These do nothing now. And then... This here is the live and the neutral, and I got live going to one side, or to the lefties, or the righties. Let's see which one. Can't tell now. And then the neutral is the other pin. So uh, this had four wires going to these guys. So I took the two neutrals to the neutral, two uh, lives to the live. Pretty easy. So you chop out your um, ballast. It looks like the ballast was bolted in here. You leave it in if you want. Don't matter to you, mirror, whatever you want to do. And rewire it, and you're good to go. So let me put this back together and put the lights in for you and give you give you a little bit of a blinding, a little bit of blind you right in the eyes. I'll warn you before so you can kind of get ready. Okay, we have the cover back on. Let's put the bulbs in. And like I said, they're pretty easy to do. What you need to do is you need to usually look at the end of your bulbs and it'll, you'll kind of figure out pretty easy. It doesn't say, but you know, see there's nothing on this side. You go to the other end and you see, oh, there's some writing on it. That's the power side, especially if it's single-ended. Uh, dual-ended, you'll have to look at it differently. But like I said, I do all single-ended. Uh, I don't do any dual-ended ones just because that's why I decided it would be the standard. So that's power. And you can't screw it up. You stick it in over here, right down there in that hole, and she'll light up. It's not plugged in yet, but you got to take the little ends off, little end caps. That protects it during shipping. And I can just put one in or I can put two in. It really doesn't matter. I wired up for two. We're going to put two in. Like I said, make sure you got the powered end. Powered end goes into the power hole. And it's always hard to do these, even if you're up on a ladder. Look at that overhead. Let's see. Yep, come on, baby. This is even harder to do it on the ground. I climb over here. Okay, she's in that hole. And we're going to put this one in this one here. This is tight. There we go. And then, of course, you want to get it there, twirl around. Have all the LEDs are facing out, like so. Because if they're not, what will happen is it'll be shining a light at that. I think it's pretty obvious, but, you know, sometimes maybe not. Now the key is make sure power is on that end. And let me plug it in. Where's the cord at? Let me find the cord first. And we just got one bulb in here. There we go. All right, you guys ready? All right, here she comes. So you don't get too blinded. So you can kind of see it's kind of hard to pick it up on the camera, but it's quite bright. This, like I said, this is 6,000 Kelvin. Uh, it's got like, like I said, a little bit of frosting on the glass, which is, I mean, I'm not, I'm fine with that. That's okay. Like I said, the other ones I've gotten before were more, they're just clear. And I had them for like two years, and the, the, at least the ones that were clear, they haven't gotten that uh, um, like slightly faded, you know, like plastic gets that over time from UV. So uh, that's pretty good. And usually LEDs don't have any UV on them like the fluorescent bulbs do, so they shouldn't really... Um, you know, fade away, or at least the, the plastic shouldn't get uh, kind of that dingy look to it. But so there you go. These are the Sunco. Looks like I bought a ten pack of these. Let me grab this guy. There he is. You can see the Sunco T LED two T eight tube. And there's your model number. See, this was a ten pack. And it's a Type B, 2200 lumens, 18 watts, 6,000 Kelvin. You can get 5,000 Kelvin if you want more of like a, a yellowy color. You know, go like 4,300 Kelvin down here and you'll get some yellow. This, see, this is clear. What else to say here? With P. 
PET wrap. Oh, so maybe that's why it's not fully clear. Oh, it has 50,000 hours, voltage, 120 volts, single-ended. So you make sure when you buy it, if you get single or dual ended, whichever one you're going to go, stick with, pick one and stay with it. Incompatible with ballast. Don't plug it in your ballast. G30 base and shatterproof. Oh, that's cool. You can speak with our specialist. Suncolighting.com. I got these off of the Amazon.com. Like I said, it was maybe like 60 bucks for 10 of them. So 10 pack for, you know, that, that's a pretty decent deal. As long as these last, and I'm going to put them out there in the shop. And we'll run them for, a, you know, six months, a year. And we'll see if any of these, uh, any we have any failures on any of this stuff along here. So like I said, you've just seen if they're going to fail. You'll have like the, like the pick and place machine that picks these guys up. You'll have, you know, the bulbs they usually have. If they're all in the, it came out sequentially off the line. You'll usually have like a, you know, the same LED burnout on each one. But all in all, pretty nice. And I... So can I tell the difference between 5,000 Kelvin and 6,000 Kelvin? No, not really. But anyway, I thought I'd share this one with you because I like LED bulbs. And this one I thought, really good deal. Um, well, they don't droop and they seem like they're pretty heavy duty. I mean, it's a light bulb. So, well, there you go. Sunoco. Where are you at, Sunoco? Sunco? I'm going to call it Sunoco. Sunco. I guess that makes more sense. Sunco Lighting. Have a great day.